Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on acids, bases and indicators. And today we are going to look at the properties of acids. In the last few classes we discussed on indicators. We looked at commercial indicators and also we looked at the universal indicator that comes along also with a, a pH chart. And we said that um, Besides the commercial indicators that, is, that are not able to tell us the strength of the acids and bases, for the universal indicator and the pH, they're able to indicate the specific strength of acids and bases. And so they are commonly used because of that reason. And we were able to see the range of colors and the range of numbers that are on the pH chart and scale. And we were able to tell what is a strong acid, the color that it has, and a weak acid, the color that it has in the pH. And also we were able to look at the color and the number that uh, weak and strong bases have in regards to the pH uh, scale. So today we are going to look at the properties of acids. So we will start with the physical properties of acids. So one property is acids are usually sour in taste. We experience that especially with lemon, anything that is citrus in nature that we eat, you usually find it sour. This sourness is because uh, acids are usually sour in taste and then they turn uh, blue litmus paper to red. This is the indication of um, their, their acidic nature and also they usually uh, the red litmus paper will always remain red in acidic condition and blue litmus paper will turn red. So we say that it is important for you to mention both litmus papers. Uh, when you are explaining your answers, mention both litmus papers. So the red litmus paper will remain red and the blue litmus paper will turn red. And remember these papers must be uh, in moisturized if you are using gases. And most of the time when you are using solutions, you do not need to make them to be mo in moisture. And then also acids conduct electricity because they have exist in ions when you uh, dissolve them in water and also they destroy clothing. If you pour any uh, acid on any clothing, they usually leave oils and also they are very corrosive. That's why you usually see uh, they usually have symbols in them to show that corrosive they are, how corrosive they are so that people can be careful. And then for the bases, they are usually bitter in taste, which is completely opposite of acids. And then they have a slippery feel uh, or a soapy feel. They turn uh, litmus paper to blue. So if it's the red litmus paper, it will turn to blue and the blue litmus paper will remain blue. So just like we said in the previous, uh, when you were discussing on acid, you said you have to use both litmus to explain. So the red litmus will turn blue and the blue litmus paper will remain blue. And then they also conduct electricity because if you add them in water, we say they are going to release hydroxyl ions. These are the ones that are responsible for conductivity. And like for acids which dissolve in water to form hydrogen ions, which are responsible for conductivity. So we, we will start with the physical property of acids and base, uh, acids. And one of the chemical properties is reaction of acids with metals. So our acids usually react with metal to produce a metal salt and hydrogen gas. This is a repetition that we're going to discuss later on when we are preparing hydrogen gas in the laboratory. So when metals react with acid, they form salt and hydrogen gas, as you can see in the general equation. And when you look at the laboratory experiment, for example, an example is zinc metal with hydrochloric acid. And later on, you are going to see this is one of the most suitable reagents that we can use for this experiment. You discuss why other compounds are not used to prepare hydrogen gas, although they can also react with um, other metals can react with other acids as well. So when you react hydrochloric acid with zinc metal, you notice that you're going to see some effervescence in the big in the test tube or boiling tube. The effervescence shows that there's a production of um, a gas. And then you're also going to see the, the bubbles of a colorless gas. 
So hydrogen is usually catalyzed in nature and it can be tested by introducing a uh, burning splint. If you introduce a burning splint, it burns with a pop sound. So that will tell us that um, the, as the gas that is being produced is hydrogen. So that is what you notice in this experiment. So apart from the effervescence and a colorless gas being produced, the also gas is tested using a burning splint which burns with a pop sound. And then uh, this is the equation. So zinc will react with the hydrochloric acid. So the product you're forming, the salt you're forming, is a derivative of the acid so if zinc reacts with the dichloric acid it's going to form zinc chloride and the rest is hydrogen gas uh, let's correct that uh, it's going to be hydrogen gas so that's what you're going to form so let's look at other examples of the same uh, reaction so every time you have these acids, yeah, these are the deriva 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 derivative salts they are going to produce. So the sulfuric acid will always produce sulfates. Hydrochloric acid will produce chlorides. Nitric acid will produce nitrates. Phosphoric acid will produce phosphate. And this is not only in this reaction. You notice the same salts are being produced in other acidic reactions or reactions of acids. For example, if we were to react uh, magnesium with these acids, so magnesium would react with the hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride and of course the gas. And then magnesium will also react with sulfuric acid to form magnesium sulfate and the gas. So you can see uh, if you react with sulfuric acid, the derivative there is sulfate and then magnesium will also react with nitric acid to form magnesium nitrate. Uh, carbonic acid will react with magnesium to form magnesium carbonate and uh, phosphoric acid will form magnesium phosphate and you can see the hydrogen gas. So let's look, uh, let's make some, some more ex examples. So let's use our previous example when we are using the zinc metal. So let's use zinc metal with all the respective acids. So when zinc reacts to the dichloric acid, it forms zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So let's repeat the same with uh, sulfuric acid, with nitric acid and carbonic acid. So when zinc reacts with nitric acid, it forms zinc nitrate and hydrogen gas. Zinc will react with sulfuric acid to form zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas. And when zinc reacts with carbonic acid, it's going to produce zinc carbonate and hydrogen gas. So those are the reactions of zinc, zinc with acids and you can see the, um, the product that is the salt actually derived from the acids. So let's look at uh, another so other metals other examples can be used for other metals as well so we can react for example uh, sodium we can use potassium with these uh, acids although their reactions are very explosive just like we'll discuss later on when we go to uh, specific reactions so we cannot use sodium and potassium in the laboratory to react with acids they are going to be very explosive and then also the ones that are below in the reactivity series, some of them uh, do not react with acids. For example, you cannot react copper with acid because copper is below hydrogen in the reactivity series. So you wouldn't see any uh, reaction. That reaction would not happen because it cannot displace uh, the hydrogen in the acid. And then the other ones that are very expensive like magnesium. And others like iron are going to produce um, other gases in, in re apart from the hydrogen gas. So that brings us to the end of this uh, session. So you see you in the next session.